Hey folks, this is Doug. Today we're going to be talking about zone two. It's why is it important for us assembling that mesquite gate and transplanting native plants up into our zone two garden. So let's get on with it, guys. I'm glad you're watching this video. I'm glad you're with me today. I had to locate, I had to come down to the wash because it's another breezy day. These breezy days really mess up my videos, but uh, <laughs> but it's a beautiful day despite the wind. So I'm down here in the wash, kind of got like a wind block going on down here. Uh, it's the best I can do for you guys today. Uh, today I wanted to talk about... Uh, that mesquite gate the mesquite gate uh like i said i wanted a grand entrance for the chicken yard uh not that this building isn't gonna be grand as it is <laughs> but uh i wanted to talk about the mesquite gate i'm assembling it with wire just typical fencing wire it's black wire so it's very unnoticeable i'm coming down to the wash i like behind me you see these old old trees <laughs> very old but they all have broken branches at their base and stuff like that so that's where i'm collecting my wood at i'm getting logs and sticks uh, ones that aren't too rotted but fairly fairly recently dropped and i'm using those up there to make this fancy gate up there i'm not going to put a door on this gate not yet maybe one day we'll see how the chickens interact i know that if you've ever owned chickens, they like to tear up a yard, right? So it looks nice and pristine right now at the moment, but give those chickens a few weeks and it's going to be a big mess. But if I have to, I'll put a, a rickety fence around the on the top, the boomerang bang, uh, boomerang berm. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I've just been artistically putting them up. There's no method to my madness or anything like that. I just, whatever looks good is how it's going up. Uh, I think it adds an element of the the old west having those mesquite branches and stuff like that. I can just imagine some old outlaws hanging out there on the porch, sitting on those stone walls and stuff like that. But uh, I think it's going to blend in really well with the tower. The tower is going to be limed over, but then you'll have that uh, retaining wall that's made of stone and stuff like that. And the retaining walls are not very structural. They're not served to hold weight or anything like that. They're just added there to maintain material in the spot that I want it to stay. Um, and it makes it really easy to backfill and edge things. It just uh, gives it a good look, I think. But uh, we're also back here. I'm collecting dirt to get ready for doing our hyper adobe bags here tomorrow, starting tomorrow. If the rain isn't too bad, I think it's 50% chance of rain that we're supposed to get. But I'm down here collecting plants also. So I'm taking plants that are kind of in their smaller stage so I don't disrupt them as much. Some of these plants here have tap roots that go 25 feet down. There's no way I'm getting plants like that uh, up into our zone too. So I'm going for the smaller sp specimens. I'm going for smaller plants that seem like they're within their first year. And I'm bringing them up there because when I cleared out that path for the chicken run, it disturbed a lot of native plants that were growing there before. And although I feel a little guilty doing that, I also need to build a chicken house and I can't be, uh, letting that stop me so in turn i plan on replacing every plant that i put up there with another species of native plant at least on the boomerang berm and perimeter of the chicken yard to offset what i disturbed here in the desert and i'm hoping that that will attract bees it'll bring stuff in uh, a lot of the plants that i collected are experiments I, I don't see them growing up on top of our hill. So 
bringing them up there is basically like introducing a new species up on top of the hill. Um, if they do grow, it's going to be semi-decorative. Like I said, they don't grow at the same altitude as down here in the wash. We're a couple hundred feet difference. So putting those up there will add interest, but it's also going to attract perhaps uh, the ins the beneficial insects and stuff like that. It'll attract them up there to the to the herb garden, the grand royal herb chicken garden that's up there. So we're hoping the native species will attract like honeybees and stuff like that up on top of the hill. Well, it's going to make it also look very like it's always been there. You know, the dis the disturbance that I've put. Um, the disturbances that I caused up there with the tractor and just uh, moving about up there. Um, bringing in this foliage will actually, these plants will actually serve as, um, it'll make it look nice, you know. It'll make it look nice. It replenishes the ecosystem somewhat. And when it grows in, it'll self-seed most likely. And then we'll find these plants growing up top of the hill. And we plan on doing that with everything that we disturb up there, replacing them with native plants. Uh, I'm not taking plants that are rare down here. I'm taking plants that are in groups of maybe there's 20 trees and I'm taking two of them. So I'm bringing them up there. We'll see how that works. Uh, the other thing I wanted to discuss is uh, zoning in permaculture. So zone zero this is not the grow zones that you see when you look up on the internet. It's not your grow zones. This is permaculture zoning. Um, so your zone zero, there, there's a scale from zero to five in permaculture. Zone zero would be your house. Zone one would be, let's say, that garden that's wrapped around your house, uh, your immediate herb garden or something like that. Zone three would be where you begin to put... Uh, sheep pens, cattle pens, stuff like that. And it's somewhat wild. It has an, uh, a somewhat distinct edge because two is pretty cultivated and zone three can be cultivated, but it's kind of like a in between. Uh, the edge is um, where zone two is where you're moving about and doing most of your work and you're doing it, you're daily, you're going there daily. Where zone three, you don't necessarily go there every day but it'd be something like your orchards and where your sheep are grazing and stuff. Zone four would be a edge between being completely wild, which this I'd consider wild, and your standard like um, farming, um, where you're growing large amounts of crops, where your sheep are eating, um, your sheep will cross into zone four or your cows or whatever you whatever you got going on. Um, zone five is completely wild. Don't, don't touch that area at all. That's left for all the native species, the deer to come in and all that good stuff. The um, beneficial insects creep in from zone five and go all the way up to zone, you know, zone one. But uh, what we're talking about is zone two. So the chicken tower is technically in zone two. It's gonna be highly cultivated. There is an actual trail that wraps around the house, zone one, and we'll circumnavigate going into all the systems that I have around the house, the ones that I need to visit every day. So our chicken tower in zone two, and that's because we're gonna visit that every day. We're gonna be collecting eggs, we're going to be um, feeding the chickens and stuff like that. And we may have other animals in zone two, like goats, and perhaps our even our sheep pen will be in zone two, but all the paddocks will reach out into zone three. Um, so I just wanted to explain that, that um, zone two is, it can have, and most likely will have some native plants in it, but it's mostly your plants that would not survive in any other zone. So basically like your fruit trees and stuff that you bought at uh, the tree store and brought in, that would stay into zone two because they're gonna need to be get watered every day probably especially in the desert at least for that first year so they the things that need to be babied are in zone two so chickens they need to be babied a little bit um and we're putting in our automated water feeding feedings so that'll be one less chore that we have to do but yeah guys um 
I just wanted to put this out really quick um, because today, I mean, yesterday I was supposed to have the day off, but I ended up doing a lot of tractor work. Today, I'm doing some more tractor work. I'm basically trying to get all this dirt up onto the, the work site so that we can get uh, our butts rolling tomorrow. Um, start putting those red bags up. Red bags rising, right? So if you guys enjoyed this video, I hope you subscribe if you're not already and hit the like button. And um, Carrie's got a couple videos coming up shortly and uh, stay tuned for that. And hope you guys have a great day. Bye.